Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dr. Anupama from the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturba Medical College, Manglo, Manipal Academy of Higher Education. Today, I shall be discussing the role of enzymes in inborn error of metabolism. Let us quickly go through the frequently used terms and their abbreviations which you will come across in today's discussion. IEM stands for inborn error of metabolism. HMD is hereditary metabolic diseases, AD is autosomal dominant, AR autosomal recessive, phenotype a set of observable characteristics of an individual resulting from the interaction of its genotype with the environment. First let us go through the basic concepts about enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that control the rate of chemical reactions in the cell. They function by binding to substrates or precursors and alter their chemical bonds releasing the products. Enzymes play a crucial role in our body. They are required for the metabolism of the basic food stuff that we take that is the proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Now the metabolism is basically required for energy production and consumption processes which takes place in a series of chemical reactions which occur within each cell. All the metabolic events are driven by enzymes which are catalytic proteins. So basically enzymes are proteins which are biocatalysts. Errors in the normal metabolic processes can lead to deficiency of an enzyme and cause metabolic abnormalities. So the topic which we are going to discuss today is related to these metabolic abnormalities. Metabolic pathways are required for the maintenance of the human body in a healthy state. So let us go through the normal metabolic process. Normally a substrate is acted upon by an enzyme and is converted into a product. But in the process there are various intermediates which are formed. There may be an intermediate 1, intermediate 2 which could ultimately lead to the product formation. So various enzymes will be acting in this process. The intermediate may be converted into a byproduct which may be a small pathway and a small quantity of byproduct may be formed. Sometimes the intermediate may be a sometimes an intermediate may enter into an alternative pathway or a cycle leading into the formation of different products. So that was normal metabolism. What happens if one of the enzymes in the pathway are blocked? When such a thing happens, the intermediate, one of the intermediates which may be an immediate precursor or a couple of steps ahead of this reaction accumulates in large quantities in which case this intermediate may be shunted to form the byproduct and this time the byproduct formed will be in a large quantity which in turn gets converted into toxic products. The other effect could be that the intermediate may inhibit an enzyme further up in the pathway which leads to accumulation of substrates in large quantities. 
So, here we see that the entire process of the metabolism is upturned. So, the product amount or the quantity of the product decreases whereas, the substrate, the intermediates and the toxic byproducts will increase. So, the consequences will be that there will be accumulation of large quantity of substrate, there may be deficiency of critical intermediary products, deficiency of specific final product and accumulation of noxious excessive products of alternate metabolic pathways. All the above interfere with normal metabolic functions. At this point of time, I would like you all to walk down the road of history. At the turning of last century, there was an eminent British physician who is also known as the father of inborn error of metabolism. He was none other than Dr. Archibald E. Gerard. He was the first to suggest a link between the genes or the inheritance, the metabolic pathway or the chemical reactions that take place within the cell and the physical traits or the observable symptoms that are seen in any inborn error of metabolism. Back in 1902, Dr. Archibald Gerard described alkaptonuria, a disease which he classified as a lifelong congenital chemical alteration. Later on in 1909, he described other diseases such as cystinuria, albinism, porphyria and pentosuria which he named as inborn error of metabolism or IEM. He used his understanding of alkaptonuria in his reasoning and based on this Dr. Archibald Gerard came to certain conclusions that each individual has a chemical individuality and genes are just not responsible for passing on the traditional inherited traits like looks. There is much more than that which they, which we inherit and metabolic disorders have genetic basis. Further progress to this concept came in 1941 when George Beadle and Edward Tantum scientifically proved Dr. Archibald's findings and proposed the theory of one gene, one enzyme concept. This theory proposed that each gene has a genetic information to synthesize a protein namely an enzyme. Even though this is largely correct, but it may not be always. The central dogma of life is the DNA which carries the genes which goes undergoes transcription to produce mRNA. This mRNA undergoes translation to produce enzyme or proteins and this enzyme in turn is required for conversion of substrate into products or various metabolic processes. So, mutation in single gene is the genetic basis of inborn error of metabolism. So, what are IEMs or what is IEM? So, they are a class of genetic disorders that result in dysfunction of production, regulation or function of enzymes or enzyme cofactors. And these IEMs or inborn errors of metabolism cause hereditary metabolic diseases. So, the molecular basis of hereditary metabolic diseases is mainly the genetic mutations in the enzymic, enzymatic loci which results in alteration of the structure of enzymes, abnormal regulation of the enzyme protein and problems with the transport, processing or binding of cofactors. 
So, depending on the residual activity of the deficient enzyme, the origin of the clinical picture may vary starting from newborn period up to adulthood. Coming to the incidence of IEM, there are more than 300 human diseases known today. The number is constantly growing because of various newer identification techniques. The cumulative incidence is about 3 to 4 per every 1000 live births. That means, every 3 to 4 child out of 1000 live births is supposed to have an inborn error of metabolism. The main inborn errors of metabolism are associated with various amino acid metabolisms, carbohydrate metabolism, urea cycle disorders as well as fatty acid metabolism. Let us quickly go through the disorders of amino acid metabolism. Now, these are some of the amino acid metabolisms in which the defective enzyme has been identified which has led to clinical manifestation of the disease. Phenylketonuria and alkaptonuria are the most common ones. Alkaptonuria was the first one that was described by Dr. Archibald Gerard. Let us quickly look through phenylketonuria. Now, in phenylketonuria, we have an enzyme defect in phenylalanine metabolism. Here we have a slide which shows the metabolism of phenylalanine. So, phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine with the help of an enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. The coenzymes required for this process are tetrahydrobiopterin which has to be converted into dihydrobiopterin. There should be a continuous regeneration of tetrahydrobiopterin for the conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine. So, any blockage in this pathway due to the defect in phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme leads to accumulation of phenylalanine and a condition called as phenylketonuria. There are various classes or types of phenylketonuria. Type 1 to 3 are due to the defect in the enzyme itself phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme. Type 4 is due to defect in the regeneration of tetrahydrobiopterin which acts as a coenzyme for the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. Type 5 is because of biopterin synthesis defect. So, here we see that a defect in the enzyme, defect in the coenzyme as well as defect in the synthesis of the coenzyme can all lead to an inborn error of metabolism. Similarly, in alkaptonuria again we go back to phenylalanine metabolism. Here tyrosine is converted into an intermediate called as homogentesic acid. Now, this homogentesic acid is normally oxidized with the help of an enzyme called homogentesic acid oxidase and converted into malyl estoestic acid. In the absence of this enzyme, the person will present with darkly stained urine. Like most of the inborn errors of metabolism, Alkaptonuria is also an autosomal recessive disorder. This disorder is compatible with life and it manifests in the third to fourth decade. Normally, in this condition, large quantities of homogentesic acid is excreted in urine, which undergoes oxidation on standing into a benzoquinone. Now, this benzoquinone polymerizes to produce alkaptones. These alkaptones can also be deposited in the cartilage and intervertebral disc 
causing a condition called as ochronosis. Coming to the other amino acid metabolism disorders, we have homocysteinuria as well as maple syrup urine disease. Now, homocysteinuria is another clinically important inborn error of metabolism. Methionine is an essential amino acid and there is an interrelationship between methionine and homocysteine. Normally, methionine acts as a methyl donor. So, the active form of methionine when it donates its methyl group is converted into homocysteine and this homocysteine is invert in turn converted into cystathionine with the help of an enzyme cystathionine beta synthase. Homocysteine can in turn be reconverted into methionine. So, a defect in this enzyme cystathionine beta synthase leads to an inborn error of metabolism called homocysteinuria. There are other causes for homocysteinuria. Regeneration of methionine from homocysteine is done with the help of two vitamins and an enzyme called as homocysteine methyl transferase. For this process, vitamin B12 is required in the form of methyl B12 and this in turn is regenerated with the help of folic acid called as methyl tetrahydrofolic acid which comes from the one carbon pool. So, any defect in these enzymes in turn will cause homocysteinuria. Maple syrup urine disease is another important inborn error of metabolism involving branch chain amino acids like leucine, isoleucine and valin. This condition is associated with excretion of maple syrupy urine which is smell which smells of burnt sugar. Similarly, we have urea cycle disorders again which are due to enzymes of the urea cycle. Any defect in these cause urea cycle disorders. Carbohydrate metabolism, even the disorders of carbohydrate metabolism are known some of which are depicted here like galactosemia, hereditary fructose intolerance, hereditary lactose intolerance, pentosuria and fructosuria. Again we see that they are all due to various enzyme defects. So, for the diagnosis of an IEM, we need to know the pathways of various amino acids, carbohydrates and lipids. Clinical symptoms may sometimes be misleading. So, definitive diagnosis depends on enzyme assays or genetic tests. Suitable blood and urine samples are required for investigations and they need to be collected at the right time in relation to the course of the disease. Biochemical diagnosis of IEM is mainly done with the help of simple urine tests to detect the toxic metabolites and intermediates rather than the enzyme. Tandem mass spectrometry and gas chromatography are the newer techniques which help in the diagnosis of IEM again they help in the diagnosis of the substrates or the intermediates that are accumulated. Genetic diagnosis is faster or rapid and more accurate. Here microarrays or next generation sequencing is done to locate the defective gene loci. So, enzymes in the diagnosis of IEM now. So, for example, Enzymatic assay of galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase in blood can be done to diagnose galactosemia. Similarly, aldolase B enzyme activity in liver and kidney tissues is useful for diagnosis of 
hereditary fructose intolerance. A matching genetic test is available which is PCR based method for detection of aldolase B gene in patients. Lactose intolerance can be de detected by biochemical assay of lactase enzyme in the jejunal samples. Similarly, lactase gene can also be detected by molecular technique. Enzymes can also be used in the treatment of inborn errors of metabolism. There is something called as the enzyme replacement therapy. Certain diseases which are shown here like Gaucher's disease, Fabry's disease and Hurler's disease are some of the diseases where ERT or enzyme replacement therapy has been tried. Certain glycogen storage diseases and mucopolysaccharidosis like Hunter's disease and MPS6 are the ones where the clinical trials are going on, but it is it comes with a limitation. Not all the tissues are responsive to the intravenous enzyme replacement therapy. The treatment also comes at very high cost. To summarize, I would like to say that enzymes play a very important role in the manifestation of inborn errors of metabolism. Enzymes are responsible for the inborn errors of metabolism, but they cannot be assayed to detect the cause of the disease. Enzymes can also be used for the treatment for the inborn errors of metabolism. Thank you.